see that um, inside disc pad it's all melted it's just um, pointless G'day punters another matrix video by necessity rather than design I was just under there checking uh, doing some pre touring checks and I uh, noticed there was a dome nut missing from one of the back of the calipers that one there but what was more distressing is I noticed the um, calipers were really close to the um, rotor and if you have a close look there there's probably no pad left on that 17,000 k's that's about how much this has done so I'm guessing that I've probably had my trailer brakes um, set up too high so brake service um, never serviced a caravan before or done plenty of trailers jitsums single axle dual axle triaxle dog trailers recruiting trailers for the defense horse all sorts of trailers but never a caravan talking to the preach I'm sure but let's talk a little bit about safety first now because this is the first time I've really jacked this um, matrix um, out of an abundance of caution I've got two jack stands each side one under the sort of shock absorber mounts and one under the swing arm as well and on this side you see I've got the bottle jack there as well and it's still got a little bit of weight on it but not much one. bad news on two fronts here um, one front is I'm not going to be able to rebuild the brakes um, calipers are rooted I'll show you a bit more of that shortly I've just taken the caliper off and you see that that's the um, banjo bolt little hole brake fluid goes in make sure you have two copper washers each side of that union and if you do take it off make sure you replace those washers see the pistons just about all the way out see that um, inside disc pad it's all melted and molded and it's probably destroyed the caliper um, the rubber boot that goes around the caliper just about non-existent anymore so um, even if it was salvageable you'd need to run a kit through it the rubber boot on this side on the sliding bolt that's the dome nut that was missing uh, it's disappeared you can see the heat marks in the piston it's just um, pointless I even trying to um, fix that so I'm just going to get two new calipers while I've got it here obviously there was a bit of heat in there so I'm going to put the um, pull the discs off as well and check the bearings and I'll probably get the um, discs machined as well now I did have a comment on Facebook about crimping brake line hoses and look there is some truth to that but um, I think it's just like with everything, you know, if you um, know what you're doing and you have the relative experience, then it's probably reasonably safe. But if you don't know what you're doing and you go in there and smash it, you're probably going to smash it and do some damage. Certainly wouldn't do that to a braided line. I have done it on a braided line as a matter of necessity out in the bush because I had to. Um, no good for the braid to brake line, it destroys the braid. It doesn't destroy the rubber inside, but destroys the braid. And that was on my Land Cruiser, and I replaced the brake lines out after that anyhow. But uh, these rubber lines, they're just like uh, radiator hoses, and vacuum hoses, and fuel hoses, and things like that. You know, like if you smash them with um, crushing them up, they're going to do damage. But if you're deft with your touch, you're going to be fine. Now getting these bearings out, um, the outside bearings come out pretty easily. Uh, knock out the split pin, undo the lock nut uh, and thrust washer, pull that out, um, wriggle the disc out a little bit. The outer bearing will come out, it's a smaller one over there. And then you pull the disc off, flip it over, like I did, and stick a um, rag underneath it. Pin punch. Make sure you hit um, the outer race of the larger bearing if you can and um, knock the bear out, inner bearing and seal out. You've got to check the bearing, make sure you haven't damaged the race. I'm going to replace the seal, so I'm not worried about the seal, but make sure you haven't damaged the bearing. I've smelt the grease in this and I felt it and it um, doesn't smell burnt or anything like that. So I have some videos on pulling out bearings of very similar bearings repacking them and stuff on, on my ultimate when I had an ultimate so if you want to know about how to actually knock out all this stuff out and 
um, clean it up and repack the bearings when you don't have a bearing pack and all that sort of stuff. Let me know and I'll drop a uh, and I'll um, respond to you with a link to a video about how to do that. Let's give you an update. It's been a couple of days since I pulled this all apart. Took those into the local brake and clutch place. Had a look at them. He said uh, by the time he machined them down, they'd probably be outside tolerance. So. Ordered some new disc rotors from AOR. They're about 165 bucks each side. Obviously come without the bearing stuff. Um, so what I'll be able to recover here is I'll pull the cones out of both of them. Need to make sure you marry them up to the same side as the bearings. And you see on this one, I've marked the left hand side. So I'll stick the cones with the left hand bearings and those cones with the right hand bearings. I should be able to pull out these uh, wheel studs as well. They're pretty simple. I'm going to put a nut on top of that and just give it a bang with a hammer. Um, if that doesn't work, then I'll use a G-clamp and I'll show you a bit more about that if that's necessary. Otherwise, I'll just um, a nut on there to protect the end of the uh, thread and bash it with a hammer. Uh, get these cones out, just a hammer and pin punch. What else have I done? I've got some new calipers. The calipers come with um, brake pads. I've got some new washers, uh, the copper washers that go around those banjo fittings. Got some new seals and some new split pins. Got the cones out of both uh, rotors already. Just thought I'd show you how easy uh, to get these studs out. So uh, not to protect the thread there. Probably two or three banks, just small hammer. Done. Undo the thread. There's the studs. Sorry about the wind noise. Weather's turned a bit. New rotors from AOR. Comes with the cones in. Got to check them and make sure uh, the bearing's going to fit in there. Give them a clean with um, some brake clean. And um, pack the bearings. Get them ready to uh, put on the stub axle. So I don't have a bearing packer, so I'm just going to use my hand. And I'm using high temperature bearing grease. It's a Penrite um, product. I think it's the same sort of stuff that may have been on it originally because it was blue grease. And um, I'm using a bearing cone to push the seal in as well. So I'll line up the seal once the bearing's in there and then tap it in without um, using a hammer on the seal directly. That's the inside bearings and seals done. I like to run a little bit of grease around the uh, seal lips as well. Just give it that start up. I'll also grease up the stub axle too where the seal sits just to give it some lubrication. Uh, besides greasing the um, bearings, make sure you um, grease these races as well. Just get plenty of grease in there. Um, haven't heard too many problems about having too much grease. So I had, had problems about not having enough. The stub axle all greased up. As I say, just a light smear of grease around that seal surface there. Some of you may say, well, you shouldn't put grease up there because that'll affect the bearing adjustment. There's some truth in that, but we'll have a look at that when I do the bearing adjustment. Now, have a look at the manual. There's a pre tension on these bearings or preload. Um, I'll get there soon. Bearing cap all re greased up. Thrust washer, stick a little bit of grease on that before I put the um, lock nut on. And that's the outside uh, race all greased up, so it's time for it to go on. Take your time putting that rotor on because um, it may be a little bit tight and you don't want to smash up the seal putting it on. Thrust washers on, I've greased the inside of it and I've greased the outside. It is a wear surface, it may spin against the lock nut. So a little bit of grease there. Again, never heard of anybody um, having problems with too much grease. That's the lock nut on. I've got a little bit of preload on the bearing. Still rotates freely. Um, can't tell you what the torque setting would be on that lock nut. Um, just using my experience now, some of you may have a crack about that as well. I've worked on things bigger than this, so I'm ha happy to have that discussion with you. You think I've done something wrong, all my experience isn't relevant. Anyhow, split pins in, I'll just fold it over. Probably need to trim up that tag and punch it back that way. I'll give you a have a look once I've done it. That's it, trimmed off that much off the split pin. These um, dust caps, Notice they had a little slastic around them, so I'm just going to do the same. Stick a little bit of slastic around this outside part, knock it back on. That's this side done as far as the hub and rotor are concerned. I did mention I'd talk to you about what I do to seat the bearings. What I do is, um, as I'm doing this up, I rotate the rotor the opposite direction, and I do it on a fairly tight. I mean, not stupid. 
stupidly tight, but tight. So I know that it feels like it's seated. I can't feel any end play there. What I do from there, this at the moment, this is nice and tight. I'll back it off, spin it around again, feel if there's a little bit of end play, then tighten it up so there's no end play. And then I'll adjust it a little bit further from there so there's a little bit of preload on it. Knocking on these dust caps, a lot of people just bang the end, but it's probably better to use just the pin punch and go around the outside. Just bang it until you hear the like a metal ting, you know, it's seated. With the slastic on that, it'll also squeeze that, and you can see that as well. The calibers had uh, two mounting bolts each side, they're stainless ones with spring washer. There was plenty of uh, Loctite on it, so I'm going to use Loctite 243. Just some facts and figures, but first of all, yes, yeah, so I've got the calipers back on and bought some new handbrake pads as well, they're about 70 bucks just to be safe. Now I did replace the bearings with new ones because they had the cones in there so they were new cones I didn't want to stick in the uh, ones I've got in the previous um, discs or pull these ones out and put the old ones in so I've got new bearings and now I just keep the old bearings as spares. Happy days. New copper washers on the banjo fitting as well. Uh, just the handbrake there's a little bolt at the back here it's about a 16 mil. Interesting little thing just happened. Um, between the last bit of video and well, it's been a day Bleeding these brakes. I wasn't going to talk to you about these um, On the top of the mask on my cap and out says dot three brake fluid So I bled them out with dot three and I thought I ring up OR and then they suggest and recommend dot four So I'm going to re-bleed them with dot four brake fluid 10 mil ring open ender on the bleeder Quickest way to bleed these most ARRs these days have the breakaway units. You know, that old blue cord. You pull that out. You might hear that. That's the um, electric actuator activating the brakes. If I crack that bleed nipple, I'll just give you a look in here. Okay, you can see brake fluid's coming out. I hope you did. Show you again. So what I'm going to do now is re-bleed the whole brakes with um, dot four. Um, facts and figures. Get out the wind a bit. Um, M14 bolts. Read the new service uh, bulletin on wheel nut torques. 155 newton meters. It's about 210 foot pound. Couldn't find a spec on the caliper or the handbrake caliper mounting bolts. Uh, they look like this, they're stainless. So I've just done them up tight. I mean really tight with um, lots of Loctite 243. Wheel nut bearing pre-tension. I mentioned that just by, I did it by feel. AOR say half to one constellation on the lock nut. Now the lock nut has a bunch of little uh, knobs, I suppose you could call it, on the outside. Probably, I reckon, six of them. So they probably call them constellations. So half to one of those as a preload, not as free play. And I've probably got about half constellation on that one. On the other side, probably close to one as a preload. But new bearings. Um, check it again. This is in for service in about two and a half thousand k's when we get down to Adelaide. Um, they'll do the bearings then. So if you haven't got it booked in, make sure you just keep an eye on it because they'll probably will wear in a little bit and they may just change the preload a bit. So just keep an eye on them. Before we finish up here, I said I was gonna have a look at the caliper and we'll go through and have a look at that, eh? Okay, these are the calipers that I destroyed, but I'm um, gonna recover some parts, the dome nuts and the bleed nipple covers and maybe even the rubber boots across the sliding pins. Now I may be reading stuff on the AOR Facebook page wrong, but the way I interpret it is some people say not to use Loctite on these threads because you may seize the, the sliding pin. That's the sliding pin taken out. It slides inside that housing there, just like that. That's what you keep greased with high temperature bearing grease or like lithium or something like that or an ADC something something that's high temperature anyhow so that just slides in there like that this little rubber boot this big fat end slips over this little collet here cool and it sits just behind the the nut on 
that little collet so it sits like that that means that sits through that part there then a spring washer then the dome nut and I'm not being cynical here but to my mind if I put Loctite on that I don't I don't see what the the problem is it's not going to affect it that should be tight there's a um, well there's a 5 8 inch nut fitting there and I think the uh, dome nuts about half inch so they're meant to lock up on that little flange there so I can't see any reason at all why putting Loctite on that would be a problem these pins aren't that accessible to grease up but you can from in behind the wheel if you take the wheel or you take the wheel off you can peel the boot off and put a little bit of grease in probably both sides certainly not all the way up into here but you could certainly put some grease in there anyhow and they are almost well, to me they seem to be a pretty loose fit see a bit of side movement there so it's going to take a lot of dirt and shit to get in there to seize that up anyhow they're my thoughts on the calipers and those um, sliding bolts Cheers and I hope you got something from this, from my horrible mistake.